um, I just want to give you a bit of an overview of AIDS 2024 and what we aim to achieve. And I think it's important um, to start with, with the team and the objectives of the conference as we, we put uh, quite some thinking in um, 2024, where we stand and what we really want to bring forward. So as you all know, the team of the conference is put people first. So we really want to bring back to call the global HIV response to we examine itself against a very simple principle, at least it sounds simple, um, putting people first. And is the HIV response putting people first? But what does it really mean? Um, and I want to dig into that a bit with you today. Um, well, at, at IS, we believe that this means that we think about solutions from the point of view of the, the most affected people. So for example, rather than thinking of, um, we always say hard to reach populations, um, we should think about how to reach health services, actually. So we should be building the HIV response uh, for the individual and especially for the most vulnerable. Um, why we think it's important uh, at EIS, it's because we really are, I mean, it's the DNA of what, what we believe in, is that we do think that we can only achieve progress if we bring people together from different worlds, from the world of research, from the world of activism, and from the world of policy. Um, and putting people first is a fundamental principle for us. It's actually one of our values. Um, so this is all nice and well, but how can we actually get there? How can we achieve that? What can we put forward as the IES in uh, the conference? Um, well, there is a number of things we can do, but obviously we do need the stakeholders, we do need you also, uh, the trans community to support us and to help us there. But in terms of like, for example, health, health services, what we, can we present, what can we promote at the conference? It's, um, well, health services that are built around people's needs, um, and there's a number of, of, of projects and activities uh, like differentiated service delivery and person-centered care that we can put forward into the presentations, the symposia that we're building. Um, in terms of research, it's also making sure that we um, address or that we, we put communities part of the research. Um, and that we empower key populations in the research. So we also uh, try to, to put that forward in, in the way we build the program. Um, and last but not least, the language is also important. We do want uh, to promote language um, that, is, um, that is not stigmatizing, that doesn't have a harmful impact on people. So we do want to put forward uh, people first language. Um, at the conference. And it's not an easy task. As you know, the AIDS conference is, is huge. There's a number of activities, but these are really the principles that we want to we want have us guide uh, the program development um, at the IES. Then in terms of the objectives of the conference, it's also important to put uh, the context on, on that. Um, so we have we had defined four objectives when we started working on, on the program. Um, obviously, we do want to promote um, evidence-based research, so innovation through scientific discovery um, across all scientific, um, across all science um, tracks. So we, we don't want to touch clinical science, basic science, but also epidemiology um, and also the science and the um, analysis of structural and economic determinants of health. Uh, so that's really something that's very important for us. So the other thing is what we want to address implementation science. So how can we advance research um, and, and, and present research that addresses the challenges um, of implementing new prevention and treatment modalities? So that obviously includes long acting technologies, but in different with different population and in different contexts. Um, Thirdly, we also want to address key and vulnerable populations. So what are the gaps, the enduring gaps in the HIV response? So where is there more investment needed um, in terms of, for example, as I said, person-centered services, um, neglected communities? How can we work on stigma, uh, tra transphobia, homophobia, as well as gender, ethnic, and racial disparities? And then last but not least, as we're in Europe and we're close to um, Eastern Europe and Central Asia, we do want to explore the dynamics of the very rapidly growing HIV epidemic in Eastern Europe and Central Asia, with potentially um, um, an emphasis on structural barriers such as criminalization, human rights, but also the impact of the war in Ukraine in the region. Um, so these are really to give you a context of, of the conference in Munich.
and why we're coming um, why we're coming we're going there. Um, in terms of the program, uh, we will have um, it's a slide full of colors as you can see, <laughs> but we will have um, just to give you you know the idea of the the overall program. We'll have uh, five days of scientific program and also five days of global village. The Global Village this year will start on the Sunday because we really want to have a public day. Um, we really want to attract people from uh, from Munich and from Germany. And we will also have two pre-conference days on Saturday and Sunday. And obviously the scientific program will be a mix of, um, of oral abstract presentations, of high-level sessions, plenary sessions, and symposia sessions that we have been building uh, for the past uh, six to yeah, six months, actually. A um, couple of numbers for you to um, to understand the magnitude of, of the conference. Uh, we had a total of 6,600 abstract submissions, and out of those, we selected 2,600 um, abstracts. As I said, we will have a mix of oral abstract presentation and a, a huge exhibition, a huge poster exhibition this year. So we're moving back to really bringing the posters back in, in the conference uh, with 2,400 posters that will be presented. And in terms of the global village, we also had a record-breaking um, submission rates. Uh, we had more than 600 submissions, and we have um, now yeah, more, more than 170 activities that have been accepted with a, a floor space, if um, that's any uh, visualization for you, but 11,000 square meters, it's really big, much bigger than uh, we had in, in Montréal. Um, just a quick breakdown here as well on you know the types of activities. Global Village will be a mix of cultural activities, sessions and workshops, and then exhibition and networking booths as well. I'm um, going fast to the slides because it's a lot of numbers and boxes, but just to give you an idea of, uh, of the magnitude of, of um, what we will be having. We also have a number of workshops, um, 10 community workshops this year. So we really put the emphasis on community workshops. Um, yeah, and then leadership and science as well. Um, and in terms of what to expect, uh, the program will actually be revealed in um, in two to three weeks. So early May, we should have the online program ready. Um, but there's already a number of things that I can um, I can I can tell you in terms of uh, for the trans community. Actually, um, very happy to say that we will have uh, for the global village opening and probably other activities. Avi Jacobs, who is the Queer Eye Germany star. Um, she will be there and um, and yeah, we're very happy to have her. And we have also a plenary speaker, Kate Nambiar from the Terence Healing Trust. Um, and uh, she will be speaking about community organizations. Um, and we certainly touch upon the trans community. Um, in terms of symposia, we have one symposia that will be fully focused um, on, on paving the way for enhanced HIV care in trans communities with speakers like Rena from Thailand, I'm not going to pronounce her surname, <laughs> and with Aza Radix uh, from the US, uh, amongst others. And we will have a number of symposia uh, that will also touch upon uh, the, for the trans community, uh, with speakers like Andrew Spieldener from Impact, um, Amanita Calderon, Sifuentes as well. I'm looking through my list and Toy Washington Reynolds, just to give you a few names, um, sneak preview because they haven't been communicated yet. Um, and we'll have the Ministry of Health, Alicia Kruger from Brazil as well, who will um, speak about um, yeah, overcoming barriers for trans people. Um, in terms of the, um, the, the global village, there will be also a number of activities. There will be a, a big networking zone, um, the Transcend Together, Unite, Advocate, Drive, the networking hub at eight, um, that we hope will be very vibrant. We will have six field screenings um, that really sound very interesting, actually. We we'll have one about trans sex workers in, in, in China. Um, we'll have one on um, in Pakistan. Um, so transgender people in Pakistan. Um, we will have one from India as well, transgender women from India, and also uh, trans women in Uganda in the current context. Um, there will be also a couple of uh, global village session and an art exhibit as well on um, health migration through the lens of Nepal's transgender community. 
So these are a couple of examples of um, of the activities that are planned at the conference. I'm sure there are more, but these are the ones that we kind of handpicked uh, for today. So we're really looking forward. As I mentioned, uh, for us this year, it's really important to yeah put people first. So including obviously the trans community. Um, we will have a, a pre-conference as well leading up to the to the conference. Um, so we're very happy to see. Uh, hopefully a big participation of your community this year to the AIDS conference. Thank you.